Hey everybody, this is Callier. Hamilton. The Swedish James Bond. You know, a lot of times I have a little lead up to something special, but um, I didn't have any time for this one. Hamilton brought this to the table, quite literally, <laughs> and um, has gifted this to the collection, to the Calier collection. So thank you, a formal thank you. Very welcome. And um, now some of you may know what this is, especially if you read the title <laughs> of the video. Um, I had one of these. I actually ordered one of these, I think back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I went nuts on it. I, I put a scope on it. Uh, I think it was a red dot scope, maybe. No, oh, really. It might yeah. not have been. It might have been a close range scope. Uh, anyway, there was some sort of scope or red dot on it and a, a pellet holder. And that's as crazy as I needed to go because these particular uh, guns are, um, well, they're, they're sort of part of history. That's why I, I like this. Now, I bought one, but uh, in classic fashion to keep the, the collection g going and growing. You know, once I have certain guns, I'll usually play with them for a while and then pass them on and, and right. get a new one. Yep. But certain guns you really don't want to get rid of sometimes, but you do for pragmatic reasons. Like, you've got so many, and like this one, you hardly use. You love it, but you hardly use it, right? And the thing with guns is that, you know, once you get into guns, you know that they're like potato chips. <laughs> you can mix it up. <laughs> yeah. I heard a great joke about uh, the, um, you know, the Pringles. Mm hmm. Yeah, Once I, I forget where I heard this joke, but with the little pr the Pringles, the potato chips, is that originally um, it was a tennis ball manufacturer, but they got a load of potatoes instead. Nice, this is the same. <laughs> <laughs> Once you pop your can M stop. Mitch yeah. he Hedgeberg, he Hedgeberg, or Mitch. He he's remember. passed away. Oh, he right. was kind of a stoner uh, <laughs> comedian. But anyway, I digress. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Sheridan. And um, it's not always called the Sheridan, but people in the know know that it's a Sheridan. And, um, you know, I, I, usually I show daisies here, mm -hmm. but yeah. the past few videos, a couple of videos, I've featured not daisies. Oh, where the hand dragon? With the hand dragon, right. yeah, that's, that's as far as they've strayed. Right. But here we are straying again. This is almost like the beginning because when I first started collecting, firearms got me into pellet guns. Right. And then pellet guns got me into Daisy BB guns. Completely backwards. Right. Usually yeah. as a kid you have the BB guns, <laughs> Then you upgrade to the pellet gun, and then you finally get yourself a firearm, and you never look back, right? I actually went the other way around. Um, so I, I started getting in the pellet guns because I was shooting so much, and it was getting very uh, expensive, mm. right? Ammo, especially. Right. Uh, I, I really started shooting a lot in 2015 or so. And um, boy, I was, I was busting the bank buying the ammo. So um, that's how much I got into shooting at yeah, that particular point, right? Then, right? And so um, I started looking into pellet guns because I, I wanted, and also um, I had moved from the country into more of an urban area. Yeah. So it was really a pain in the butt to drive because I used to be able to just shoot in the backyard. And it was a really pain in the butt to drive to some shooting range and back. So, and that adds to, you know, gas money, oh, travel, that yeah, all adds yeah, to it, absolutely. right? So I, I got into pellet guns, started shooting in the backyard, and, um, you know, when something quiet, but something that 
could reach out to like you know 50 yards yeah. so that was the that was how how big the yard was and um uh, geez i don't quite remember what i got first but this was amongst the first ones mm. I, I i i really as you might know, when I get into something, I get into it. You do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm going to get, if I can't, if I'm not going to get into it, I won't bother. Right. So, um, so yeah. But this is definitely one of the must-haves. Is the old Sheridan. Now the Sheridan came out about 1942. I say about 42. I could say it came out in 1942 as the 312. Um, and then is, is still, to my knowledge, is still being produced. I don't know about the COVID situation, but to my knowledge, is still being produced. Um, I say questionably 1942 because here, as you see, we always double check and triple check our facts and whatnot. And it turns out uh, Wiki has the Sheridan being put out in 1947. So, um, so we're talking around 1942 to 1947. Now, um, the Sheridan Model A Supergrade, that's the one that was introduced by Sheridan in 1947. Um, it was probably the finest gun that was being produced at the time. And um, it, suffered l low sales because of how expensive it was. And there's, uh, they say here, $56.50. Right. right, and during that time, World War II, right? Well, 47 is after. Well, right, right yeah. after, yeah. But I'm yeah. sure people didn't have. Uh, I, 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 you know, I think after World War II, there might have been a slight lull, maybe, in gun culture right there could have been uh, we definitely know there was a lull in the 60s 70s right right so um, and you know that lull is expressed in the Sheridan and its history because as we look here we have 1942 the 312, 1943, the 312, 1950, the 312, 1968, the 312, 1969, the 347. So just two guns in the 60s, right? Yeah. And then in the 80s, uh, we get, there's a, a popularity and the model 342 and the model 87. Which, by the way, this particular, sh we can't even really call this a Sheridan, I don't think. <laughs> because it changed from Sheridan to Benjamin, and from Benjamin, in the, uh, it turned to Crossman. Crossman bought up oh, Benjamin in the 90s. So, um, and so you can see the variance you know, when they come up with a lot of variants within a 10 year period, you know that the gun culture is, is doing pretty well, <laughs> right? So, and sure enough in the 80s uh, and then uh, into the 90s, all the way through the 90s, now you, this is still being produced. Now this particular one is the 392, 393. 392 PA. Yes, I just double check that. 392 PA. There's the 392, the 392 P, and the latest being the 392 PA. Um, there's some discrepancy what the P and the PA stands okay. for. But we just, we'll just, for now, we'll just look at that as a different iteration or a variant. Um, with some slight changes. Um, this is not exactly like the 392 PA, which came out in 96. Um, so my guess is this is an even more recent one. And the reason being is the barrel extends just slightly over the hand pump stock. So um, where the 392 PA from 96 actually is almost about probably about twice 
mm. is long. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, these have the brass barrels. I believe this is still, uh, this is, I, I can tell this is mm -hmm. a brass barrel, I'm pretty yeah. sure, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is kind of an enigma, like the last gun that I got, meaning I don't really know exactly what, we know it's a 392 PA. We're guessing that maybe it's from the 2000s ish, yeah. right? Um, but we don't quite know. So if you know, definitely uh, share your knowledge with us in the comments section. So now, the 392 is a very special gun. And I, let me tell you why. As far as function goes, I got the, of course, firearm shooting indoors is very restrictive. <laughs> All right. Shooting indoors, if you have a varial pump, is very doable. Now, shooting indoors with a BB gun, not a good idea. Mm. Even if you have a trap uh, for the BBs, if you miss, that BB is going to just ricochet right, right. all over the place yeah. and come back Dangerous. really powerful, yeah. right? Because it, 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 it just it's a ball. It's a ball. It's like a Super Bowl. Yeah. It bounces <laughs> all over the ball, place. Yeah. yeah. So um, even though they're low powered, usually the BB guns, uh, the daisies, right? They're not much more than 300 or so uh, feet per second. The Sheridan can go up to about, I believe, six to eight hundred, somewhere around there. You guys can. I, I don't know if I have that information right here, um, but yeah, they're they're they're. Uh, oh, there we go. Variable seven hundred. Yeah. There's one report of seven hundred, so that's about right. Somewhere above six hundred, let's say. But you can actually, because it's a multi pump, you could just pump it up like one or two times. Right. And you can shoot it into a, a box like we have right down range here. Yeah, and and it's perfectly safe. Um, the, the, the power is low and uh, there's a great control over the travel of the bullet. And that's what you want it, is you want it to be safe. That's the thing with guns. Guns are great as long as you're on the right end of them. <laughs> right. Right, and you practice safety. All right, so, um, so shooting a BB gun is, and right now, because of COVID, man, it's, it's hard to go outdoors to shoot, right? right? So, um, and as you guys know, uh, most of my collection is now BB guns and not pellet guns. So, um, but now that COVID's come along and I haven't been able to shoot indoors because what I brought along with me was the, the BB guns, this kind of just magically, perfect, by, by, <laughs> by way of Hamilton magic has appeared back into my life. And I'll tell you what, I'm so appreciative that I'm not even going to bother putting a scope on this thing. Putting a scope on kind of made it hard to load anyway. And it's just a single shot, shoots a 22. This came in a 20 caliber, 22 caliber, and a 177 caliber. This is 22. This is a 22, yeah. yeah. So um, I believe it came in 177. I want to assume that it, it did. I definitely know it came in 20 and 22, the early ones in 20, and now the 22. Um, Let's talk about this for a second. Again, these started in 1942 and are still being produced today. And again, that's testament to how great the design on this was. All the way back in 1942, and it's still being produced. Now, it's a heavy yeah. gun. So that's another good reason to not put a scope on it. It's already too dang heavy. Um, but man, a heavier gun is easier to shoot. Yeah, like the weight. Yeah, it's e it, 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 it kind of, um, it's easier to, to, um, to aim with a heavier. Um, if it's too heavy, then it's hard to hold it, hold it up. But it's not that heavy. 
but it's it's heavy enough that it really is different than a lot of the uh <laughs> oh we have we have a musical accompaniment. <laughs> Uh oh, the loon is singing along. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, can we focus during oh, this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> um, They're all very, very similar looking. The the models. Yes, yes, similar, but not all the same, and not the same length of barrel, and not the same length of the bolt length. This is more forward, and some of the more later ones you'll notice uh, are the bolt, uh, the entry point is more uh, back, I believe. So, um, so l let me close this so I can. Uh, <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> we might be able to edit know. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway yeah, slight difference yeah it, it, there's so the, nice. the the pump handle has gotten bigger as well yeah um which is actually good for leverage and whatnot so some of the drawbacks and why uh, you know, w why maybe this isn't in everybody's collection is because it, it might be hard to pump, right? Yeah. Heavy. Um, but otherwise, it's really, you know, it seems more powerful than it's rated. I think that's yeah. kind of, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, I think we need to get to doing, yeah what we really want to do, which is let's stop talking about the Sheridan and, uh, and let's go ahead and shoot it. I've got a camera downrange at the target. Hopefully that is, keeps working for us and hopefully we don't shoot it. Hamilton's going to put on his, uh, well, his eye protection. Here. Yeah. And we're just, I don't think we even need to get up. I think just sitting yeah, here like in the comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and again, that's the beauty of this. Now, there's nothing living downrange. This doesn't have enough power to go through any walls or anything of that nature. So uh, the way I like to pump this is to kind of put it on my lap or put it down on something. Uh, but if it's on my lap, then I can avoid cr you know, messing with the... Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and then... And I got the, uh, the, this particular one has a safety on the trigger. So I have the safety on, safety off, red is dead, mm -hmm. right? Safety off. So the safety's on, this barrel is still pointing in a safe direction. I'm just gonna give it two pumps. That's it, that's all you need. And that's kind of nice because one of the things that I didn't like about pellet guns was that you have to pump them or you have to pump it and then load each one. And so then they came out with the, you know, you can kind of multi-shot, you know, kind of repeater style. Right. Um, the gamos, you know, the gamo swarm and stuff like that, where it's a cylinder and you kind of uh, work the action and, and reload it. Um, but you still gotta, you just, nah. they still haven't perfected that. So anyway. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 392, the Crossman 392. As we know it, I think, where are we at here? I think 2000s, whatever it is, yeah. it still it's shoots so great. Here. It shoots great. We didn't do anything to this. I just cleaned it up a little, oiled it up a little, down very little, very little oil. And, uh, and here we are, so let's give it a try. That's not bad, yeah. not bad. Nice. I'll tell you what, since I'm in a better position, I'll 
Yeah, you'll do the shooting. No, I, I'm gonna let you shoot. I just, I'm gonna load it oh. for you though. Yeah, I'm gonna get it going for you. All right. So, again, there's nobody downrange, so we are practicing all the safety measures that are required. All right, how familiar are you with shooting? We'll find out, won't we? We'll find out. I haven't <laughs> shot this before. <laughs> all right, just don't shoot the camera. <laughs> Very good. All right. Oh, nice. Nice. I'd say uh, you, I like that, that. Yeah. I like sight on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, not bad. Nice. Yeah. But don't, need, don't need a scope for that. All right. To All tell right. you what, we're, this is not going to be a long video, but we'll do two shots each. All right. All right. Um, if you have more information, or if you have a Sheridan, uh, let us know. Let's talk about. Let's talk about this thing yeah. because. I think this has a very specific niche. Now, there are other guns, um, you know, the All-American is, is one that comes to mind. There's a lot of different pumps on the market, but this is just a classic, heavy, it's almost like a real gun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's got lots of wood, and no, there's no plastic on this, not that I can see. This is um, not actually plastic. This is like some right. That's what I thought. Some first, kind of right. uh, 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 metal, right? You know, cheap metal of some nature. But um, you know, m m a lot of guns now are like all plastic and stuff. Which and, and there's some of them are great. It's just that they're plastic. So uh, one of the things I love about guns is the aesthetic of the gun. And so. Um, I've really come to appreciate the aesthetic of the Sheridan, especially having one and then not having one. Yeah. I'm really stoked to have another one because the aesthetic on this is just unparalleled. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. All right. So they're, they're all slightly to the left. that means anything yet. We haven't shot more than three. <laughs> well, you know, um, when you're shooting guns and pellet and stuff like that, there's different styles of shooting. And so the style of shooting that I'm kind of in, interested in right here, which really we're just half-assing, yeah. because what we're looking for here is groups. Right. To get the, a group. Yeah. So if there's a whole group that's in one area, then you know you're shooting straight and that that's just how the gun is shooting. Which is different from bullseye shooting, right? Yeah, yeah, I, that's a, that one was, oh, so I think we're, I think we're about even. Yeah. Was that, that was two shots, right? Yeah, yeah both, both two shots. All right, one more. All right. Let's just do one more. All right, All right. we got need tiebreaker. One more tiebreaker. Yeah, because yeah. uh, we're kind of tied right now. Not that we're competing. No. <laughs> <laughs> but of course not. You know, there is there is a target. <laughs> so and this is so much like the bolt action like gun. So you the, the yeah, it's just one, got one it's it's very reminiscent. You know, it's it's actually. Originally, they were very reminiscent of the Remington, the shotguns, but now it's more reminiscent of a, of a rifle. Woo! You almost got bullseye. Oh, is it just so? Oh, oh boy, hold on. All right. Now, do I get one more? Putting the pressure. Yeah. I get yeah, one more? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's your, your <laughs> shot. I shot two in a row. Okay. So, so that, then, I, I don't know if I, I'm going to be able to outdo that. Man. I tell you, I, I don't know how many times I bring guests on the show and then they outshoot me. <laughs> it's because I'm too busy entertaining. Right. <laughs> to really focus on the shooting. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> oh, so close. Yeah. But I think That's you. A nice I flew group there. But I think you won. I think you got that one. You got the yeah, closest the third one to the one. bullseye. Yeah. The third one. Yeah. yeah. Close. Excellent. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. 
the Benjamin slash, no, the Sheridan slash Benjamin slash Crossman 392 PA. I don't know what, um, what year this is, but should be easy to find out because um, from 1997 and previous, they didn't have this kind of uh, trigger guard. The trigger guard was more squared. This got angled. And there's, of course, a safety, which we'll put on right now. Yep. There's a safety on there. So, um, so it's definitely sometime, I would assume, after 97. Right. Yeah. So, um, and let me see. A tip. I'll give you guys a tip. And some of you already may know this. But um, when you store your multi-pump guns or your pump guns, right? Put one pump in there. And that, uh -huh. that helps to keep the seals um, uh -huh. from uh, going bad. Interesting. Cool. I, I, when I learn more about why you would do that, I'll tell you. But that's been the advice from the uh, gurus. And, um, you know, it, it makes sense. It's a pump, right? Um, but like I said, when I learn more why you'll do that, I'll share that with you. Or if you know, share that with us down in the comments. Um, again, this has a shorter barrel from the stock. So, um, so that's one difference that I've noticed and this angled uh, trigger guard. So, um, all right, got any questions? No, it'd be no? interesting to find out now which year it is exactly. Yeah. If anyone knows. Yeah, we uh, talking about it. Yeah, there is this exact now, one. There is a zero zero three uh, is what it starts with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Of a nine serial, it's a zero zero three. I'm not gonna read the rest of the serial. The the serial number T, but it starts at zero zero three. So um I if, might give it away. If but, that yeah. means something to somebody, yeah. let us know for sure. Um, I, this definitely looks like brass. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a painted barrel, but I think it's brass. Um, and of course, b it being brass, I don't think you would want to put steel pellets because they make them. Mostly they're lead, but they, they do make steel. And I'm not quite sure that would be wise to put that right. in a, uh, a brass barrel because right. the barrel is softer, the barrel, than, yeah. softer than the ammo, right? Um, yeah, you know, this hits out at 50 yards just fine, you know. Um, and the beauty is you can just pump it up a little bit, shoot it indoors, or go outside, shoot it outdoors. It's a little on the louder side, but most pellet guns, especially the more powerful they are, yeah. are louder, um, even with the suppressors on them and stuff. And this doesn't even have a suppressor, so you can imagine how loud this could get. It's not very loud, but still noticeable if you're in an urban area. That's why I got BB guns. BB guns make no noise whatsoever. Right, right. They're low powered, so they're not breaking the sound barrier or anything, you know. Um, you know, this is still low powered enough where it's not breaking the sound barrier. I believe sound barrel, I forget what the sound barrier is. And hopefully we get to test it outdoors in a couple of weeks. Yes, pretty soon. And when we do, I, I, we got to bring these guys yeah. and oh, we'll yeah. shoot this outdoors. We'll do some plinking and uh, see how far we yes. can hit out yeah. at a distance. I'm curious about the distance. Yes. Because it yes. feels really good, really fun shooting. But you know, the daisies, I hit out at 50 yards with the daisy BB gun. So hitting out at 50 on this would be pretty easy. Yeah. And fun. Yeah. No yeah. As long as you don't mind from a distance. pumping it up, right? Pumping it up and loading well, single you focus load. more on each shot. Each that's true. That's true. Um, yeah. But you know, that's weighed against a BB gun where you get to shoot many shots, like practice, shoot practice. ten yeah. shots to your one sure. shot easily. Yeah. yeah. Easily, right? So, um, but again, that's why I mean by specialized. You know, each gun has its specialty. The 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 daisies wind up to me being the most used of the guns because they're so you just fill them up and shoot 
forever and you don't have to fill them up right. until you've done 500 or a thousand shots right so um that's a, a huge convenience the i'd say the biggest inconvenience and what turned me against not against but why i preferred bb guns for quite some time was it was just constantly loading and pumping and loading you're doing more pumping and loading than you are right. shooting for sure work, so yeah. the bb gun especially the daisies when you can fill them up with 500 or a thousand shots man you're definitely getting more shooting in than any other gun any uh, you're getting more shooting than a, a firearm yeah because firearms mm. 10, 30 rounds, whatever, how many rounds you have. We're talking hundreds yeah. now. And yeah. And if you got, a, again, now you're talking cost as well, mm -hmm. right? So for pennies, for pennies, you're filling up a Daisy BB gun and being able to shoot it. And then, of course, the next cheapest would be the, the pellets because these this whole tin costs about six bucks. Right. Yeah. And, um, and for how much? For 175 pellets so you're not gonna for six bucks you're gonna get about six to twenty shots with a firearm right. <laughs> oh, maybe 22 you got a good deal on 22 but, um, the Sheridan uh, not the Sheridan I guess we have to call this a crossman now funny enough this doesn't have anything on it that says what it is other than model 392 PA. Doesn't say Crossman on it anywhere. Right. Did you notice that? Yeah. That's Nowhere right. on this does it say I Crossman. It. Yeah, it only says uh, air hole, do not oil. Yeah, I had no idea what it was bringing. <laughs> but on. notice I did oil this part. Yeah. Right, yeah. So this is, that's, that's why it's nice. And, oh, Nice and buttery. When we before we oiled it, oh, now it's got it's got a lethal load. Okay, one more shot. One more shot. Just just a throwaway shot. Um, yeah, just oiling the pivots on it. That's all you do. Just the pivots. There's a little rod that goes in and out. Maybe just rub with your finger a little oil on that. And it's amazing. Look how. Oh, I'm not going to open it up. But it's, it's very oiled up. You know. Um, for the little amount of oil that was used. All right, can I sh cheat and get the winning shot? Yeah, I get it. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know where that went. We're gonna have to look at the footage. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. I don't even know where that went. We're gonna have to look at the footage. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. So that is the 392 PA Crossman. And hey, I'd like to give a shout out to the um, Backyard Air Gunner. Um, you know, since I've been doing this, um, since the whole COVID thing and traveling, I've really slowed down in my collecting uh, the cost and also where are you gonna put all the guns, right? right? So I've slowed down in my collecting. I haven't stopped, but I've had to slow down. Um, but Backyard Air Gunner is, is one of my buddies out there. I don't know him personally, but um, I watch his videos and boy, he has, he has amassed a collection. Nice. So, um, you know, of course, go check us out at pickingadaisy.com. That's where I have my whole collection that you can check out and where all these videos go. Um, but then also go check out uh, Backyard Air Gunner and all of his stuff. And he also plays cool. music. He's a rocker. So he sometimes just gets on there and plays. Yeah, yeah. in California? Um, I don't, yeah, I think so. Yeah. He might be somewhere in California. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, cool. I have a sneaky suspicion that he and I were both influenced by the same guy. And I'm gonna give a shout out to him as well, which is uh, Hickok 45. Hickok 45 is a, a gun channel. And he's a, a, a guy out there in uh, Tennessee or Kentucky. I think Kentucky, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, he's been online forever uh, and he collects guns and shoots his guns. In fact, you might notice this is a homage to Hickok 47 because oh, wow. he always has a deer skin or some animal skin out on the table with his guns and then he shoots his gun in his backyard. So he was somebody that influenced me 
um, totally was my influence in doing this sort of thing. Oh, very nice. But with pellet guns and then eventually BB guns. Right. So um, there's enough gun channels out there that I did want to compete with them. And it's kind of weird too, like showing everybody all your guns, right? So <laughs> all your firearms. I don't feel quite so bad or so nervous, let's say, showing everyone my pellet guns right. or BB guns. But showing yeah. everyone your firearms is that's a little different. That's another level. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks um, for subscribing. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And um, then you'll know when we're going to do this again. We're probably going to make another video over uh, the next couple weeks. Yeah. So, in fact, no, we are slated to make another video in about two weeks from now. So, we'll see you then.